Hi everybody, this is Gijs again with another review and I hope you are doing well. This time it is the Hilleberg Anaris, a lightweight trekking tent for two persons and the snowless seasons. And this one is quite special because it doesn't come with poles. So how do you pitch it? Watch the review. Welcome to the review of the Hilleberg Anaris. And for those who just tuned into my channel for the first time, um, it might be polite to introduce myself. My name is Gijs with a G. And Gijs is a really Dutch name. So that means that I am a gear reviewer from the Netherlands, mostly known as Holland, taller tulips, clocks, and windmills. Well, that's not totally the case. Um, but because this is a Corona video and I'm not traveling a lot at the moment, um, one thing that's absolutely true about the Netherlands is that it is a very flat country. So I'm doing this one in the floodplains next to the river Waal, um, but it has been a ridiculously warm summer, so the ground is really rock solid, really hard. Um, and basically this is a three season tent, but I'm shooting this video now with about 25, 26 degrees. So this is a quite easy walk in the park for me. Now, that said, uh, I'm 100% independent, so I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews. So if you like what I do at the end, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. But now, Let's start with the beginning and let's start with pitching the tent. And before pitching, let's start with the pack size and the weight. Um, the pack size in the pouch to the Hilleberg has a size of basically 23 centimeters in diameter and 52 centimeters in length. Um, I put this one on my precise scale and I measured a weight of 1402.2 grams. Um, Hilleberg claims 1400 grams, so the weight is actually spot on. What is maybe nice to know is that Hilleberg um, categorizes its tents to its purpose. You've got the blue tents, the blue label tents, basically, they have got a very special meaning, like group tents. Then you've got the black label tents, which are basically the one for the really severe conditions. Um, and then the most common ones are basically the red label ones and the yellow label ones. On the red label ones, um, the strength is a little bit favored above the weight. And with the yellow uh, label tents, the weight is favored above the strength, basically. Now, the Anaris is a yellow label tent, and that means also that it is basically for the snowless seasons of the year. That said, let's dive into the pouch itself. As you can see, it's not a compression bag, and Hilleberg's got a reason for this, because Hilleberg thinks that if you have a compression bag and you put the tent in there and you strap on the compression straps basically and then you might damage the fabric because there are some metal parts on a Hilleberg tent and some toggles as well and that's why they don't do it. Um, what happens when you put it into your backpack I don't really know. Let's put the pouch here because it is a sort of a little bit windy and as you can see this is how I pack my tent when I'm done camping. Um, most of the time I roll it into a roll Sometimes I wrinkle it and I put it into the stuff bag because I don't have the time and especially when it's, uh, it's wet, that's more my way of doing stuff. Um, now, the tent itself, in this case the outer tent and the inner tent are still connected. Um, the inner tent, basically the mesh here and the yellow fabric, um, it weights on my precise scale 639.3 grams and the fly, the outer tent, I measured it at 618.1 grams. Um, because you can detach them, of course, um, you can also use them separately. So if you leave a part at home, that's why the weight of both parts is basically important. Now, the packs. Um, Hilleberg always provides the tent with aluminium packs with a pulling loop. And I like the pulling loop and they are Y-shaped um, packs. Um, they come in the pouch. There are 12 of them in there and they weight 123.6 grams. Now, I already lost one pack, regrettably, that's somewhere in Switzerland. Um, and then last but not least, the pouch itself. This one weights only 23.2 grams. Now, if you take all the weights and you count every one on top of each other, then, um, or you add every one on top of each other, then it should be 1402 
grams, but I'm not sure if I didn't make a really small tiny mistake in measuring because it sometimes happens because maybe there's some sand or a piece of paper like a hang tag on there. Now, this is all I wanted to tell about the parts itself, except for one thing, and that is what are you missing? Yes, the poles. This tent doesn't come with poles because Hilleberg made trekking poles. The Anaris is intended for backpackers and Hilleberg thinks that every backpacker uses trekking poles. And to be honest, I don't think everybody does, but if you wear, if you use a backpack a lot of time and it's a heavy load, then I would strongly advise you to use trekking poles because it's better for your knees and sometimes for your balance. Um, but Hilleberg made these trekking poles, so I'm going to pitch it with the Hilleberg trekking poles. Um, more on the trekking poles later. Now, let's pitch it. Now, basically this is all there is to it to pitch the Hilleberg Anaris. And now let's get into all the small little details of this very clever design tent. And let's start with the main material. Like all Hillebergs, also the Anaris is made out of Kerlon fabric. And in this case it's a Kerlon 1000. Kerlon is a ripstop nylon and ripstop you can see it if you look at it in details they are the let's say the visible lines in the fabric um, that when you get a puncture in the fabric itself those lines will prevent the puncture from getting into a tear when you have some tension on the fabric um, so in this case ever if you got a thorn in it it will not be a problem and it's also very easy to repair in the end now Kerlon 1000, it's got a thickness in this case of 20 deniers and 20 deniers, it's a really lightweight fabric. There are some tents that are made out of a 15 denier fabric, which is ridiculously like a thin, it's, it's like a sandwich bag basically. Um, many other tents are made out of 30 or 40 denier fabric, but they are of course way heavier. Um, the fabric itself, it is of course waterproof and Hilleberg treats the fabric with two layers of silicon on the outside and one layer of silicon on the inside. Um, to prevent the fabric from deteriorating because of the sun, it's also got a UV um, coating on top of this. Now with a silicon fabric on the inside, um, it is not possible to put a taping on the seams. Like for example here, when you've got, let me take the fabric, when you've got this part of the tent and this part of the tent, there is the seam. Um, with a lot of other tents who have a polyurethane coating on the inside, which is sort of a plastic to be impolite. Um, then you can put a taping on top of it and that will make the seam waterproof. What Hilleberg does, first of all, they use very sharp needles because if you look at the punctures made for the um, yarn, you can hardly see them, but they use a swell yarn. And when the yarn gets wet because of the rain, um, it swells and it fills basically the hole. It closes the hole totally. So you will never ever get a leak there. But after a couple of years, when you put a lot of pressure on the tent fabric itself, it might sometimes happen that one of the holes gets a little bit bigger and then you take some seam seal on the inside and then you basically, it's like a sort of glue and that's how you fix it if you've got a little hole. It's also, if you've got a very little puncture, sometimes it works. Um, that was what I wanted to share on the fabric of the outer tent. Now let's roll the door. This is what I like, the simplicity of Hilleberg tents. Um, just a toggle and of course a piece of elastic band and that's all that's needed. Now let's continue with the inner tent. Um, of course this is a mesh and it is a very fine mesh and I've had places with a lot of bugs, midges, mosquitoes and I didn't get any one of them inside the tent. It's that fine. Um, what you also should know is that the inner tent roof the yellow part, it is also made out of a ripstop nylon and it's even more lightweight because it is a 10 denier ripstop nylon. Um, on the outside it is treated with a durable water repellent coating twice. 
so that if you've got a drop of condensation falling from the inside of the outer tent onto the outside of the inner tent, um, it will drop, the, this drop will flow away to the side and you will not get wet inside your tent itself. Now the floor, this one is made out of a 50 denier nylon, not a ripstop, and this one is coated with polyurethane. So in the floor, Hilleberg would have had the chance to put a taping on it, but they didn't because they use also swell yarn um, in the bathtub itself. So that one is, is, is waterproof because of this. Now, that was what I wanted to tell about the materials of the inner tent and the outer tent. Now let's dive into all the small details. One thing that is of course important for this tent are the poles themselves. And this one was provided by Hilleberg um, to me. I own many trekking poles and I even have one that looks very, very similar. And there's a reason for this because um, the poles, they are made by the Korean pole manufacturer, Duck. And Duck already produces poles for Hilleberg ever since that I know that Hilleberg existed. So that's for some time by now. Um, you might know Duck also from the other brand, which is Helinox. And in the past I did a few reviews on the Helinox chair one and the table one. Links up here. I did the reviews too. Um, and I also own a pair of Helinox trekking poles and they are almost similar to these ones. Um, and I do like the Helinox trekking poles and I've been hiking with this one as well and I like these as well. Now the thing is um, to adjust them it's a very easy system and you've got this length between the 125 and the 135 centimeters. The length how much you basically need depends a little bit on the conditions if it's wet if it's dry if it's warm or if it's cold and also a little bit on the ground where you pitch the tent because sometimes you've got the tip of the trekking pole sinking in a little bit so what i basically normally do is i put the pole in there and then i erect it basically so that the tension is on the right spot um, but the sweet spot for me always happens to be somewhere around to 130 centimeters um, the trekking poles, and that is quite neat, um, they go into this top area. And now let me loosen this one so I can show you this a little bit more clearly. And loosen this one as well. Upa. Then you can see that on the inside there is a sleeve. And basically the handle of the trekking pole goes into this sleeve. And it's a very sturdy one which I think is absolutely good. And I've tried this with a lot of other brands from Helinox, Leiki, Comperdel, uh, Masters, and all of the trekking poles that I own, which are quite normal trekking poles, they fit into the sleeve. So in that case, if you already own a pair of trekking poles, you don't need to buy the ones from Hilleberg. As I mentioned, the inner tent and the outer tent can be used solo. Um, and they are connected to each other with only six toggles. Um, two up there at every end of the pole and four on the corners, of course. And what I do like, and it's all in the details with Hilleberg, is that the ones on this side, both of them, they are the toggle and the ring, they are color coded in red. This one and the one on the other side. And there is a reason for this because um, it might be a almost symmetrical looking tent but it's not the case because if the door is on this side and you turn it the other way around then the doors would be on the other side and you won't have the outer door on this side so that's why the color coded toggles are over there one thing that you might have noticed is that the guy lines from the corners are pretty long um, and there is a reason for this now let me demonstrate this this is the guy line that is used to get the corner from the outer tent of course onto a fixed point into the ground this one, I attached it for demonstration basically. It is used if you pitch the inner tent solo. It's not needed now. So if I detach it, you will see that nothing basically happens. Let me get it over the... Now, you know, the tent stays in one piece. Um, the guy lines themselves, they are so long because they need to get the fly away from the tent and higher to get a lot of ventilation going underneath the tent. That's why it is a tent for snow-free seasons. But what happens if the weather turns really foul? Now there are basically two things that you can do. The first is you can basically put the peg in a different spot because you can shorten, of course, 
the peg length. And then when you pitch it here, it goes a little bit more downwards. What you also can do is use the peg just on the metal ring and you push the outer tent basically to the ground and you're way more wind resistant and rain resistant. It will never ever happen that it, that it wind blows underneath it. Now let me get it back into its original position. Basically the downside is of the very long guy lines is that the um, Anaris might be a small tent if you look at the footprint of the tent basically on the corners. But if you think that you can pitch the tent on a very small spot, that is not totally the case. Because it happened to me quite sometimes that I was in a forest and it was quite a hassle to get the corners of the tent into the right direction. And basically I measured it and it takes about, if you put it into its full glory, um, a square of five meters by five meters. And that is well, not too small basically. And one small word on the pegs themselves. Because of the Y shape, um, they provide very good grip in a lot of different kind of grounds. I've used them in well, rock hard, solid earth. I've used them on rocks, they go quite nicely between cracks. Uh, and also on sort of muddy terrain, they provide quite some good grip. Um, and also because they, they have got these little notches, you have got the rope of the guidelines that will attach to it. And I like basically a lot this pulling cord because when you need to pull um, the pegs out of the ground with your hands the aluminium and especially the notches they are quite tough to the hands so with the pulling cord that is never ever a problem and you can really take it out very easy and by the way the guy lines they look reflective but they are not now that was most of what I wanted to share with you on the outside of the tent. Now let's get into the tent. And as you can see, I put some camping gear that I bring normally on my trips with me. Uh, so you have a little feeling on what the space of the Anaris is like. Um, this is the backpack, the uh, Shinji 48 that I reviewed earlier. This is a Primus fire stick. I'm still working on this review, but that will be coming up as well. And this is of course my beloved Kupilka mug. And no, I'm not sponsored to say this because I'm independent. Now, let's get into the tent. What you will also notice, and now I will switch to the GoPro. Let me take my shoes off. Um, is that I've got two mattresses in here. And a sleeping bag, Faude sleeping bag, Lola mattresses also up for review coming up shortly. Now, the inner space of the tent. Um, the tent, it measures 120 centimeters in width and 220 centimeters in length, according to Hilleberg. Um, I took my tape measure, I measured it as well, and I measured 122.5 centimeters in width and I measured 217.5 in length. So it's a little bit shorter and a little bit wider. Is this a big deal? No, because it's close enough and maybe this is a pre-production sample some things might always differ in this respect and also because it's handmade of course now um, the height up here um, i'm a small guy only one meter 70 um, the height it's what i measured is 108 centimeters and hilleberg promises 105 centimeters so it is a little bit more higher which is of course always nice if you're taller than i am one thing that I did not mention when we were talking about the materials is the bathtub height of the floor itself. And the bathtub height, now let me get the sleeping bag out of the way. The bathtub height is basically the height of the um, floor that goes into the walls. And the height is six centimeters. And that is not too high. I've had tents, most tents, they have a higher bathtub floor. Um, is this bad? No, I don't think so, because if you've got six centimeters of water around you and then you're flooded anyway, um, so you should pick a different spot to pitch a tent or you should leave anyway. Now, that's the bathtub height. Um, what is nice about this tent is it might be a little tent and you see that the mattresses, they are quite wide, so this one is quite leaning into the bathtub. Um, is that the, on the both sides, shorter sides, there is a sort of a wall and now I jammed the mattress in there because the GoPro wouldn't be on the ground itself. It will be bouncing around the whole time. Um, but I measured it at 27 centimeters and this gives a nice head clearance. Even if you're lying onto this thick mattress, I believe it's eight or 10 centimeters, um, you've got enough room even if you want to use a pillow. So this is like something that I really like and it gives a nice spacey, airy feeling on the tent. Um, 
there's not much about the features I can tell you on the Anaris because there aren't any basically. The only features that it has are two loops um, where the poles are also attached, two loops that you can attach a wire to or a rope so that you can put wet socks over it so that they can dry during the night or for a lamp, something like this. Um, what I do miss on the Anaris, and I notice this basically every night when I sleep in it, is that there is no pocket where I can put my glasses away during the night. So I have to bring something else, not to crash it at night. Um, and that's something which I think is, well, it's not stupid, but I do miss them. It's a bit silly. Um, most tents that I review, they have got some sort of pocket somewhere. Um, they don't have it. Uh, Hilleberg told me that's because of weight reasons. If they would have put a pocket on every corner, the weight would have increased and it would be too um, heavy into what they still think is lightweight camping. So that's the reason for them. Um, but still, I rather would have pockets. Um, that is basically all that I can say on the inner tent. There is one thing that I did not talk about, but then we have to go outside and that's basically the door. There's one here of course as well, but from that side it looks just better. Um, and then we'll go and discuss the awnings as well. Maybe it's good for you to know that well, everything that I do on that side, it's totally similar. Sim it's totally the same on that side of the tent. So if there's two of you uh, sleeping next to each other, nobody has to complain about that. That part is better of the tent than that part because they're actually the same. Maybe the view on one of the parts is better, but hey, that's why you pitch your tent. Now, um, let me continue with the outside camera again. And now I will put my shoes over here. Um, one thing that is key in my experience with the Hilleberg um, is the following. And that's basically the door, the mesh door. And I will demonstrate this. Sitting on my knees, get the toggle loose from the elastic band and I will zip it. Like so. This goes perfectly well. I'm not sure if you can see me because of the mesh, but if you can hear me, that's fine. Um, it is only a one way zip. And now you see what I mean. It's only a one-way zipper and it is a YKK zipper and YKK makes quality zippers. But what I don't like, and I'm not the only one because I asked other people to sleep in it as well and to use it, is that every time when I want to open the door or want to close the door, I have to go basically from that side, go around this corner and go up. When I'm lying in my bed and um, I want to have to take something from the inner tent from the outer tent, from the awning into the inner tent, then I have to reach up here. When I'm lying down, I can't do that. So I have to go down and you see that the bend, every time this corner, it is not running very smoothly. And now I'm sitting here and applying pressure. But if I go to the outside, you will see that when I pull the zipper up, um, the whole fabric basically goes up. And what I miss is a connection part, a loop or something like it, which goes underneath the pole and is connected to the floor so that I can put the floor, maybe with the floor, maybe with a piece of um, fabric and a ring, I can put the pole fixed on that point so that that one will never ever move anywhere else. But that also the floor will just stay where it is because then you've got this fixed point. Now, and I'll demonstrate you, it to you when I go out again. And now I'm going to have grass underneath my socks in my shoes, but who cares? Now, and now I'll try not to be in the way. What happens is that I have to do this. And now look, this is where it goes wrong. And my wife also, she's been trying this a lot of time. And every time she says, I want to have a two-way zipper. I don't need more zippers, just a two-way zipper. So I can open it here and I can take a cup of coffee into my inner tent without having to pull the whole zipper. That's a lot about the zipper, but this is basically the only real thing that I don't like. And again, I talked about this with Hilleberg and again, weight is the issue. That's why they didn't put a double zipper in it. Now let's continue with the awning. Um, the space underneath the awning, the width or the depth, how you see it, is 90 centimeters. And during camping, I've noticed that the 90 centimeters 
we've got the same on that side is way enough if you want to do some sort of sheltered cooking you have to be aware that there is a big gap here so you still need some wind protection from maybe a sleeping bag um, but cooking underneath this is fine even if you close it down a little bit more um, you can still sit there and enjoy the evening when the wind or when it gets colder and you feel that the cold air is going downwards um, you, you, you're pretty sheltered in here um, and I think that if you are going to bike or with backpacking um, that the tent there's enough space to store your gear not in the inner tent but under the awnings and that's what I do really like now there is not much left anymore except for the fact that I still want to show you in all the different configurations you can use the Anaris because it is really a very versatile tent so bear with me and I'll demonstrate this now like I said some configuration how to pitch the Hilleberg Anaris of course this is how it should be totally complete with all the guidelines extended now first configuration is of course with the door open in case it gets hot you can take this one away and now I can do the same on the other side and now I have got a very airy tent for nice weather but maybe a cold morning so I need the shelter or the protection from the outer tent but now there is more what I also can do is take the outer tent away totally now and like so with the outer tent gone I have got a very nice basically midget mosquito protecting inside tent that because of the DWR on the outer fabric also prevents me from getting a little bit wet from the dew in the morning but is this all no there is another configuration so please bear with me and now we are back at the beginning now let me show you how to remove the inner tent and use the fly as a tarp what is also a neat trick now that if you want to have some more cooking space um, because maybe bad weather or a camping stove that's a bit like a fuel one with uh, petrol then you just fold this one back and now you've got way more cooking space without damaging the inner tent so this is cool now let me remove all the other stuff that one over there one pack to go up a kidoshi like so let's get this out of the way and now i got a tarp and in this one way more people can sleep so that is also a feature of this tent now there's more and now i can sleep in it with a lot of view of the whole area panoramic if i'm with a friend and that friend has got trekking poles or when i'm in the forest um, the anaris of course these loops where the guidelines are on i can use them also to attach a rope to a tree now if i've got another pair of trekking poles or a tree then i can do this as well like so and then i have got a shelter from the rear it's protected from the wind and the rain and i've got a very nice view just if you go out for a hike and you need some shelter during the day very easy now as you can see with the Hilleberg Anaris there's not one road leading to Rome there are many different roads now let's get back to the review itself one thing i did not talk about is the ventilation and the condensation with the Anaris well like all lightweight tents the Anaris has got a certain amount of condensation but only on the main top of the fabric and because there's not a top ventilation here but because of the high walls when you've got a little bit of wind um, there's a lot of air moving around between the fly and the inner tent so ventilation is quite decent and a lot of condensation is prevented um, what would have been nice if Helleberg made a floor for the complete tent so that means the inner tent and the awnings itself but Hilleberg doesn't do it they only make a tent or a floor for um, the inner tent itself to protect the floor of the inner tent 
which is quite good as well because sometimes when you're on rocky ground um, that's really a sensible buy but to prevent more condensation I think that a floor that would have covered the awnings as well would have been better but maybe in the near future you never know one thing that I also did not talk about yet and that's quite logical with this beautiful weather is what does this tent do with bad weather well to be honest this has been a very hot long summer and we've had a lot of wind but we did not have that much of rain and I went into the Alps and we had fine weather there we've got some thunderstorms and some wind and I can really state that the tent itself is 100% waterproof what you should be aware of is that if you have the tent in this config configuration so with the high walls and not leaning downwards to the ground that sometimes when the wind is blowing quite hard that you can have some rain that will get underneath the fly and that will touch the side walls but still you're still protected because of the main or the fabric of the inner tent that's water resistant and because of the high outside polyurethane coated floor so that is not really a problem but you should be a little bit aware of when the wind picks up really um, and when it gets really severe bad weather then really pitch the tent with the pegs into the loops and pitch it in basically the worst case scenario really that works like a dream so weather protection overall well it might be a tent for not snow conditions but it's definitely a three season tent and now it is almost time for my verdict like I say almost because that's one thing that I would like to discuss and I would like to have your opinion on this um, I've been saying that this is a lightweight tent and um, it weighs 1400 grams if you google lightweight tents then 1400 grams is not the lightest tent there is on the market now I've been discussing this with some people who've seen other reviews of me of Hilleberg tents and that I stated it is a lightweight tent. Now I've been talking to Hilleberg and they come with a very good explanation in my opinion because lightweight is what they see as lightweight because they don't make lightweight without consequences. They make lightweight but durable tents and that's why lightweight in their opinion is a little bit different than if you count every gram of every tent but like I mentioned um, it doesn't have pockets it doesn't have a two-way zipper because of grams so in that respect Hilleberg makes its own choices um, do I regard this as a lightweight tent yes I definitely do because 1400 grams is quite a um, nice figure if you take the space and all the possibilities that the Anaris has but there's one little catch and the catch is the trekking poles because I own a lot of trekking poles I don't have to buy them anymore and I walk with them I hike with them I backpack with them every time I go so for me this is nothing extra not even the weight now the Hilleberg poles they weighed 524.7 grams if I'm correct remembering this um, so if you add this to the 1400 grams you almost get to a tent of two kilos with poles so bear this in mind and make your own choices on this to me yes I think this is a fine weight for a fine tent and now it's time for my verdict the Hilleberg Anaris um, this one came to me for the first time on the Scandinavian Outdoor Awards about a year ago then Hilleberg sent it to me and ever since I've been using this tent I like it and maybe that's because I'm Dutch because we have got a lot of this kind of tents um, made out of cotton heavyweight heavy duty tents um, that's how we camp in the old days and this one has got a lot of resemblance to those so in my opinion this is a sort of a Dutch classic um, the 1400 grams like I said before I don't mind about this um, the tent it's proven to be waterproof and it is okay windproof for me as it is um, and if you want to adjust it it's just a matter of how you pitch the tent like I showed you um, the things that I don't like about the tent are basically the one-way zipper I would rather see a two-way zipper and I really miss some pockets on the inside um, what I do like is the white awning because it's a perfect place to put your stuff and also to do some cooking or if you want to have a little bit more shelter that's possible too the best thing about the tent is probably that there are so many configurations possible that there's always a situation that you can adapt the tent to No, know that you can adapt the tent to every situation then the price the Anaris retails for 700 euros 
And when I heard that, I thought, wow, this is a cheap Hilleberg, but it's not a cheapie because it is a well-made tent. Then you have to take into account that if you don't own the trekking poles and you are a Hilly fan, then you maybe want to buy the trekking poles from Hilleberg and they retail for 175 euros. So take that also into account. Taking this all together, I rate the Hilleberg Anaris at 9.1 points out of 10 total. I hope you liked the review and that it is useful to you. And if it is, please give it a like and leave a comment below. And also, if you've got anything to ask about the Anaris or all the other stuff that you see in my videos, please don't hesitate to send a comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer everything that you can throw at me. Um, if you just tuned in at the conclusion, then you might not know that I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid by manufacturers to make my reviews and I don't have any affiliate deals yet and I don't have any advertisements on my website. So if you like my way of independent reviewing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I uploaded a new video. And please like my Facebook page and please follow me on Instagram. It really helps making independent reviews. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the outdoors and stay safe. Ciao, ciao. And now I am going to have a beer, but I can't because I didn't bring a beer. So I'm going to make a coffee. Um, reviews coming up, of course. The Primus Fire Stick. Um, I've got a, a new sleeping bag from Faudet with a very sad story. So if you want to know that one, stay tuned.